Right off the bat, let's do something a little weird. Instead of leaving you little nibbles and breadcrumbs, trying to get you sticking around for video retention, let's just lay it all out on the line. Instead of telling you a story about how my niece's uncle's dad used to sell speakers out of a van, but now makes focal replicas in his basement. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. So getting right into the power on these, it's 150 watts at eight ohms and 300 watts at four using Encore technology. Not enough power to run an entire town, but it's more than enough to power realistically anything you have at home. And this one has room correction. Your room isn't perfect, no matter what your mom tells you. And no matter how many ugly sound panels you put up and slap all over your walls, you still might endlessly search for that perfection. Unless, I don't know, you live inside of a recording studio. The room correction in the i150 is designed to help with room modes. Using the wild looking procedure that I'm going to demonstrate later, you can fine tune the peaks and valleys in the base regions of your room. Also, you might save your marriage and save some money in the process, at least lessening the amount of absorption panels and bass traps. Now for the power supply. It's actually split between the power amp and the preamp. Basically, you get a clean signal path, which should result in reduced noise and inky black backgrounds. Bacard even states that around 70% of what you're paying for on this integrated is the preamp. It's meant to be a performer, and it just happens to be paired with a well-known and heavily tested power amp as well. On the topic of preamps, we may as well mention the DAC on this one. It's a ES9028 Pro. It's not the newest iteration, but I put it side by side in comparison with a 9038, and I didn't feel like it missed a beat anywhere really. DACs are getting so good these days, to the point it's almost like as long as they're implemented well, you may be better off chasing the tech and the connections the DAC offers, or even spending your money elsewhere that might have more impact on your sound dollar for dollar. The volume control on this one is done completely in the analog domain. This is implemented in a manner to prevent any reduction in dynamic range. Beyond that, it's a great pair with the Encore, integrating directly into the Encore output stage. Ah yes, that remote. I can honestly say this is my favorite remote. When I unboxed this, I was like, no way, they actually put time into this one. Almost all of the remotes I get are either practically the same and made of cheap plastic and feel like really an afterthought, or in the case of the EverSolo DAPA6, they went with the grand theory of not even including it and charging extra. Great idea. The remote that comes with the i50 though, it's machined aluminum, fits in your hand really well, lights up to display functions and actually came with batteries. So kudos to Mads. It's a remote that actually feels like it matches the quality of this integrated amplifier. On this one, we also get dedicated sub outs with extras. You get a pair of sub outs, which is nice. Many integrated amps only leave you with the option for preamp outs, which do work fine, but take away some of your connection flexibility. Now, if we swing it over to the app, you have the ability to set your low pass filter, distance for things like time alignment and the polarity. You can actually click on the speakers from this menu as well and fine tune the high pass filter and distance. Just get everything set how you want it, and then run it through the room calibration and let it take over from there. Something else that this one has that many don't is the low level enhancements. Think of this one as a loudness switch, kind of like uh, something you'd see on vintage receivers from the 70s. When you listen to music at low volumes, you lose some of the dynamics in the bass and treble. Hence why we often crank it up a bit to experience the you know, wide range and dynamic output from our speakers. What Bookart did here was provide a tool that can compensate for that effect. It'll boost frequencies using the included DSP to bring a more pleasing and dynamic sound, but at more reasonable listening levels for things like late night listening or keeping the volume lower for conversation between friends. Mad specifically talks about it in regard to studio use, allowing them less fatigue in longer working sessions, but I found it to be really powerful for home use as well. As for streaming options, this one won't include any advanced streaming platforms, but it does have Bluetooth 5.0 with AppDex and AppDex HD, along with an AAC Kodak. This doesn't really bother me. Lots of good streaming platforms out there right now, and I would almost prefer to keep this separate. To myself, it feels like streamers date themselves a lot faster than things like this integrated amp will. Keep them separate and allow more upgrade flexibility in the future. Also, if they put PlayFi in this, I would have had to add that to the con list. 
the damn Audiolab 6000N. Now that we've covered a lot of the features, let's get a better look at this. Starting from the front, it's a very minimalistic design that carries a lot of the same feel from the S400 Mark IIs I have. They look good together. Not a lot of buttons or dials, simply a large volume knob in the center that lights up these lights here in a linear fashion, which is actually kind of cool because it matches how the remote handles the volume as well. Outside of that, the small power button and the input selection. The input lights up as well to signify your current selection. The top is a simple flat top, no cooling, just some additional branding above the volume knob. And the sides are styled as well in this. It has a sort of a overhang for the panels along with all the venting. It has a Scandinavian design type of look. You can tell there was actual thought in the design rather than just a simple black box with no life or expression. It's something I can really appreciate because like a lot of you, I would imagine you like to have your gear out on display like I do. Looking at the back, we have a couple sub outs like I mentioned earlier, as well as the pre outs if you wanted to run that into a separate power amp of your liking. Wrapping up the analog, we do have a single line in. We do only get one here, so depending on your configuration, you might wanna bring a phono amp into this or a streamer. This amp won't be an analog workhorse, but it definitely covers everything on the digital side with four input options. Coax, two optical, and a USB. The speaker terminals are also of good quality. It's a good solid field, and the rest is just our standard power input and the power toggle. So now getting into how this one sounds. First with the subs disconnected and a pair of Buchart's own S400 Mark IIs, I figured these were likely voiced together, so might as well bring it in to give it its full potential. The bass, first of all, was absolutely amazing, which didn't surprise me a whole lot, as the S400s can produce some remarkable low end for their size. The sound came at you with detail and precision, a fast articulate bass that wasn't overblown, but instead added texture to the mix that really just couldn't be ignored. The sound from the amp was actually a bit warmer than I expected. It didn't produce any fatigue on the S400 Mark IIs, but those are also voiced quite warm, so I really didn't expect it to. So I wanted to test it a little further, and I brought in my KLH Model 5s to see how it would handle those. They have an aluminum dome tweeter and can be a little bit more picky on certain pairings. But same story really, the i150 seemed to wrangle them in well, the general smoothness was still intact, and it never let that tweeter get out of control. This i150 in combination with their fine tuning and preamp focused design demonstrates why Class D amps are climbing rapidly in home consumer hi-fi setups. Class D took over pro audio equipment years ago, and while I acknowledge and hope we still see new Class A and AB designs, I welcome the advancements in Class D. I mean, my reference amp is an Audiolab 9000A, so I'm not one to dismiss a proven design. It is an AB amp. I just like to see how far we can push the envelope on these. Keep advancing these technologies to the point we can really remove the need for the ultra high end. Bring in more products like the i150 to the public that can really do all you need and more. Now, if we wanna take things a step further, we can throw in a pair of subs, apply some filters, and do the room correction dance. Which is, at the very least, it's the simplest room correction I've ran into. The i150 plays a tone, and you simply cover as much of the room as possible in 60 seconds, while staying roughly 40 inches away from the speakers. You have two options for measurements. You can use an iPhone, which is what I used, as well as their mic, which is just recently released and is actually supposed to measure a little bit more accurately than the phones. What you end up with is a sound that will mimic, at least, to a point in acoustically treated room. The room modes you're looking to eliminate, or at least lessen, are caused by the boundaries within your space. Sound pressure is reflected, causing what we call room modes. The easiest way to demonstrate this phenomenon is with your sub. Have you ever noticed you could be sitting in one seat and then feel like you're not getting any of the impact, but you move over just a few feet and the slam and bass is back, maybe even too much in some cases. This is where the calculations are gonna take place. It may require a particular frequency or several to either be raised or lowered. One thing to always keep in mind is that it takes a lot of amp power to boost a frequency. So instead of looking at the chart and thinking you need to boost, Maybe you would actually be better served dropping the peaks and finding neutral that way. Oftentimes room treatments won't get you all the way there and you can't guarantee that this will either depending on your space. But it certainly works to your benefit and should get you a lot closer. Wrapping this one up, let's take a look at a couple things I think we could add next time that could even take this a step further. I honestly didn't have a lot to complain about. I would easily put this up there in my recommended list. It's a no brainer, especially for those with a strong digital interest. And on that point, one of the things I'd like to add would be a phono input. I get it, this amp is really strong in the digital input side, and it's likely the intent. But truth be told, the look and vibe I get from this, 
I just really want to pair it with a turntable. And I could, but I would need to use the single analog RCA input. The only other item I'd like to mention is an XLR input for those who like to experiment with various external DACs. And that's all I really have, a couple of analog asks. One thing I should have mentioned earlier was how well this thing was packed. The amp comes double box and is sealed in a plastic bag, and then in a nice cloth sack. Even the inner box was shrink wrapped in plastic. I generally don't film the unboxing, but in this case, it was worthy of a mention because it was probably the best pack product I've opened up. As for the pros with this one, you get all the power you need on tap. It has a strong focus on a preamp section, a great value for the money for those looking for a good preamp. It has the best remote I've come across on a product to date. You get room correction and a powerful EQ that we normally don't see at this price range. It does great at low volumes. On that same note, the app, which offers you plenty of options to really fine tune this amp with any type of speaker, bright, dark, white, white van special. I could go on for a while here, but really, I just wanna say, don't be afraid to check this one out. It's been a fun listen. I think it's priced competitively with like-minded gear. And if you purchase this one with their passive speakers, they actually give you what they call the Buchard family price, which takes another 500 off. 500 is nothing to slouch at. And at that price, it's competitive well above its price point. Heck, I think even the full price is as well with all that it offers here. Thanks for watching this far. As always, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Without all of you, it wouldn't be possible. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.